this is a very fun, exciting episode. Sometimes all you really need is some nice, fun action to really sit down and be entertained. And that's exactly what I got with this episode, you know, some good entertainment between two passion fights, you know, fights of ideals, fights of strength and power, etc. But with that being said, it was just very interesting. Here I thought, yeah, we're in the final round of this arc of battling, but what will be the end results that will happen later on down the road? Um, who knows? We see Jinko, first of all. Let's talk about Jinko. His arm grew back, but spiritually, he's really manifesting his power after getting a heavy blow in from Durin. He like just, just reached inside of his head and it's just messing with his sails, and he got himself a set of tail. And Talon's over here is freaking out because, hey, you're doing some stuff you shouldn't be doing here. See, you grew the other tails naturally by growth of power. This one, you kind of forced the power out by picking in your brain. And doing that stuff forcefully doesn't really do you any good. And we can tell through history or any work of fiction. But he really needed that win. Because this dude was not going to move unless you take him down with one powerful blow. And that's exactly what happened. And despite all the spectacular fight scenes and moves, one thing no one's talking about is what happens during near the end of that fight. We see unknown figures in hoods just, just walking by. Like, they, they don't even care. And only those two can see it. Not Tama or the Mountain God assistant, just Jinka and Durin as they're duking it out. And these, these figures are just walking by, like, oh, ain't our business. And they just stop, like, the, what, what, what are these things, man? Where do they come from? And why are they just passing our path? Like, they, like they, they're walking by, like, they're used to walking by people. Like, they're used to walking through anything, whether it's a disaster or someone fighting. It doesn't matter to them because no one can see them. But for some reason, Durin and Jinka was able to see these figures, and they just carry out their business. What the heck? It could be some serious foreshadowing. Who knows? Who can say? <laughs> now, my personal favorite battle was the one between Shinsuke and Barry. Shinsuke and Barry. This has been a rivalry that's been sizzling up for a good while, and it reached its peak finally in this episode. You know, and as these two are just spewing hatred and anger at each other, you know, of their terrible lives and losing people and all the other sad stuff. This sword, Shinsuke's sword, gained so much spiritual power to the point that it became a katawara itself. Not only did it become a katawara, it gained self-discovery. It became enlightened. Once when they flew to that sky, this sword realized it wasn't blood it was after. It was freedom. It was looking for someone to take it to the sky to fly. It's true purpose. To truly control the wind. All the hatred, rage, and power, and everything else that we have going on in the world is nothing compared to the endless sky to this sword. And it was just so happy. You know, it was just bursting on energy and excitement. Like, what do you want to do, my master? Where do you want to go? And all Shinsuke said, let's kill this dude. And he like, what insignificant task you have for me, but let's do it anyway. This sword was on cloud nine, probably cloud 12 for all we know, because this thing, the alignment, even Shinsuke can sense it like, wow. And then the battle was so big, it was just flying in the sky, man. A house, yeah, he's pretty much, Barry's pretty much the size of a house, because they're inside of a giant ass temple, fighting against a man and a flying sword that just found itself self-discovery, and it's free, free as can be, and then the fight went to to ground, just buries hatred so much, to the point he had his talisman-like body that he was keeping together, but all it took was a few slugs in, and Barry finally died. He died without realizing anything, no fault, no nothing, just full of rage and hate, and to the point his body just broke down. Because he just had no more spiritual power to keep himself up anymore. That's a terrible way to go, man. Just just going on not learning nothing in life. Just full-on hatred on your goals and so nothing like that. Whether you're incarnated as a 
you live on it, the cursed spirit, or you reincarnate it once again, trying to learn more out of life than you did before. That's how it usually works anyways in these stories. Shinsuke, however, feels a bit different. You know, he, he grows up from being the clown, the one that everyone makes fun of, the comic relief character, to the serious dude, the guy with the eyes that looks dead inside and everything. He makes a completely total 180 in a round. But he believes, I believe he found himself a little, realizing the difference, there's no big difference between Katawara and humans. And Jinka discovered the same thing as well. Now, only one thing left in the way, and that is Tizen. Wizen, I mean. Tizen is the giant mountain that has been taken over by Wizen himself in order to fight them. However, the assistant summoned her lady, her mountain lady, and she shows up with a giant mountain herself to overtake what takes down a mountain, an even bigger mountain, and it just destroys. And I love how the monks, mainly the head monk, as they were watching the fight happen, and he was just having this conversation in his head the entire time, realizing that they have forgotten their purpose. The entire time, they want to take down Katawara, but they were doing it by obeying orders of the man who had them stay put and go on their experiments, as well as stay in the same place. But originally, these monks were supposed to be traveling around and helping people out with their Katawara problems, but they seem to have forgotten that. But now, they realize there's no point realizing this power that they had the entire time. It was never meant for them, and they now are, are realizing that in a way. So these monks are realizing the flaws of what they were doing, probably go back to their roots. Even to top off their example, they're watching the fight between the two mountain gods, the two behemoths, in a way. And it was showing how, see, even the strong opponent fought. We thought no one could take down that mountain god, but yet here comes another one. It shows this path to power is meaningless, because no matter what you do, another powerful person will just show up and take you down. It is the Garden of Madness, as um, Sylvia would say in Normal Heroes, you know, the Garden of Madness. You know, Normal Heroes, where the, the heroes, the assassins, take each other out in number one spot. But no matter what happens, another stronger person will show up to take the spot as well. And it never freaking ends. <laughs> That's exactly what happens here <laughs> in, in, in life itself. Oh, it should be someone on top. But anyways, why is he not done yet? He has one last card up his sleeve and is doing spiritual transformation, just like Jinka was doing with Tama, and he's doing with Tama's mom. And I guess the mom just don't really care much for Tama in a way. It's like, oh, Tama, you must write this, you were wrong. It's like, I guess that's just how it is with long living creatures in a way. Very interesting. But anyways, looks like we're about to enter the final battle of this arc of this round. Probably ending season one's core. And then we'll have two more cores as well. And so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing how all this finally wraps up. But anyway, just like that first video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This is the background on Anime. Signing out.